You know what I found out recently is is like uh, Diebold changed their name. Did, Did you, you know see? That? that was an amazing story about the virus software. Yeah. Oh what happened? my! What happened? What happened? Oh, they're it's... blaming. They're basically they're uh, it, okay. Premier Election Solutions, formerly Diebold, has blamed Ohio voting machine errors on problems with the machine's McAfee antivirus software. Oh, good. They're uh, running McAfee. I, and I like the, you know... There's, How does there's a, a virus one... get on an election Well, this machine? is the conversation, right, which is, well, surely it's better to have virus software on there than not. And the obvious answer is, well, why Imagine on earth have you got an infrastructure where your election machine <laughs> needs a virus software? And, and if they're relying on McAfee, we're all in trouble. And I think, I think they have a great analogy, which is, uh, it's like your, your high school teacher at a parent-teacher evening saying, whenever I teach, I always use condoms. We think, sure, sure, it's better than not, Zip. but someone's doing their job very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, McAfee actually does a pretty good job on a lot of things. But what's fascinating about that is, yeah, what are they connected to? What kind of open network are they connected to that they would need antivirus software? What, in, what internal incidents causes that? Or is that just some bizarre belt and suspenders approach to the security on these devices? This needs looking <laughs> into. Well, yeah, but the Diebolds need looking into for years. I mean, Diebold has their ass handed to them so hard, they basically changed the name of the company. Did They did that because they thought Premier Election Solutions would be a big draw for, you know, all of the electorates that are trying to replace their hanging chad machines. No, they did it because their name got trashed because they did a bunch of things wrong and they made it enormously difficult to make it for outside sources to verify the veracity of their code. That's a sentence. <laughs> verify Boy, the veracity. That was something. <laughs> Yeah. We've been learning about the Diebold election systems conversion to premier election systems. Why did they change their name? Uh, they changed the name of that division. It's a subsidiary. Uh, it's but also because Diebold has such a bad rep, right? No, Diebold, Diebold actually has a really good rep. They probably made the ATM machines that John has. Right, they so. make everybody's it. Yeah, they make all yeah, I mean, they're good. I mean, they do a lot of good stuff. They just the, they acquired global election systems in 2001. Oh, they're and, the problem. Then there was the whole Georgia Secretary of State did a contract with Diebold, and then the chief executive of Diebold was doing a lot of fundraising for the Republican Party. And, and then, then, you know, there's all sorts of... Uh, all sorts of stuff. But basically, like in March 2007, it was reported by Associated Press that Diebold was considering divesting itself of its voting machine subsidiary because it was, quote, widely seen as tarnishing the company's reputation, unquote. And actually, in August 2007, a Wikipedia scanner found that edits via the company's IP addresses occurred to Diebold's Wikipedia article, removing criticisms of the company's products, references to its CEO fundraising for President Bush, and other negative criticism from the Wikipedia page about the company in November 2005. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's interesting. Well, I think that everybody agrees that there's no way an election, electronic election system can work without a paper trail. I know people are fighting that, but I think now election commissions in every state agree, and that's pretty much the standard, isn't it? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah. Just some kind of backup. Just Any kind of look. backup. Just wait a look and see if, it, you know, if the machine lied. I think that makes sense.